Welcome to our show, The World Brief. Today, we've got some exciting updates from around the globe. First up, the Women's Cricket T20 World Cup has found a new home in the UAE after the International Cricket Council decided to move the tournament from Bangladesh due to recent unrest. The event will now take place in Dubai and Sharjah this October, promising a thrilling series of matches in a new setting. Stay tuned for more on this major shift in the cricket world. In automotive news, Tesla is riding high as the European Union has significantly reduced tariffs on its China-made vehicles. This decision comes just two months after the EU had increased tariffs on electric cars from China. The recalculated rate for Tesla is now set at 9%, much lower than the hefty tariffs imposed on other Chinese carmakers. This move could potentially boost Tesla's sales in the European market. We'll dive deeper into what this means for the electric vehicle industry. And in political news, Chinese Prime Minister Li Chang has embarked on a three-day visit to Russia and Belarus to strengthen ties between the nations. This visit comes amid ongoing international tensions and NATO's concerns over China's stance on the Ukraine conflict. We'll explore the implications of this trip and what it could mean for future international relations. Please stay tuned for detailed coverage of these stories and more. Associated Press, the Women's Cricket T20 World Cup, originally set to be hosted in Bangladesh, has been relocated to the United Arab Emirates due to severe political unrest in Bangladesh. The turmoil, which began in July and resulted in over 300 deaths, led to safety concerns and travel advisories from several participating countries. The tournament will now be held in Dubai and Sharjah from October 3 to 20, featuring 10 teams. ICC Chief Executive Jeff Alardis expressed regret over the move but praised the Bangladesh Cricket Board for their efforts. He also extended gratitude to the Emirates Cricket Board for stepping in, as well as to Sri Lanka and Zimbabwe for their offers of support. India had previously declined the opportunity to host the event. CNN, the European Union has significantly reduced tariffs on Tesla's China-made vehicles, providing a potential boost to the company's sales in the region. Initially set at 20.8%, the tariff was recalculated to 9% following Tesla's request. This new rate is considerably lower than the additional tariffs of 17% to 36.3% imposed on other Chinese electric carmakers. The European Commission explained that the tariff adjustment reflects the subsidies Tesla received in China. This decision comes after the EU had increased tariffs on all electric cars imported from China, citing unfair state subsidies. Despite the new tariff still being a challenge, it offers Tesla a competitive edge over rivals like SAIC, which faces a 36.3% tariff. Tesla's Model 3 remains competitively priced even after a recent price hike, unlike BYD, which has not yet increased its prices in Europe. Deutsche Welle, Chinese Prime Minister Li Chang has embarked on a three-day visit to Russia, aiming to strengthen the already close ties between the two nations, which have deepened since Russia's invasion of Ukraine. China has maintained a neutral stance, not condemning the invasion, leading NATO members to label Beijing as an enabler of the conflict. After his visit to Moscow, Li is scheduled to travel to Minsk, Belarus, further signaling China's intent to bolster its relationships in the region amidst ongoing geopolitical tensions. South China Morning Post, the F&B industry has been rapidly evolving, driven by technological advancements, particularly cloud-enabled solutions that have revolutionized business models. Maxim's Group, a major F&B conglomerate in Hong Kong, has leveraged Amazon Web Services, AWS, to enhance mobile solutions, enabling contactless experiences and on-demand delivery across Hong Kong, mainland China, and Southeast Asia. By utilizing AI and big data analytics, Maxims has personalized the user experience, boosting sales by 30 to 50 percent. AWS cloud infrastructure has also facilitated real-time inventory management and robust cybersecurity, ensuring seamless operations and data protection. Cloud technology has not only streamlined workflows but also enabled scalable business expansion, as seen with Janky Sushi self-service ordering system. Maxim's Group's partnership with AWS underscores the critical role of cloud solutions in driving innovation and growth in the F&B sector. South China Morning Post, Chinese President Xi Jinping lauded the nation's Olympic athletes for their exceptional performance at the Paris Games, where China won 40 gold medals, matching the United States. She praised athletes like Pan Zhanla and Quan Hong Chan, emphasizing their sportsmanship and integrity amidst doping controversies. The athletes' achievements were seen as a testament to China's growing sports prowess and national strength. She highlighted the importance of maintaining humility and striving for further success, particularly with the upcoming 2028 Los Angeles Games. 
He also stressed the integration of national fitness and health initiatives to foster greater athletic glory. The event, attended by notable athletes and officials, underscored China's commitment to sports development as a reflection of its modern achievements and international standing. Foreign policy, the role of nuclear weapons has intensified since the end of the Cold War, with nations modernizing their arsenals and engaging in strategic posturing. Despite the grim outlook on nuclear disarmament, a promising approach to mitigating nuclear risks lies in the adoption of a no-first-use policy. China has long upheld this stance, pledging not to use nuclear weapons first under any circumstances. While skepticism remains about the credibility of such pledges, particularly in scenarios involving Taiwan, China's growing strength supports its adherence to this policy. The United States, though not formally committed to no first use, has a nuclear posture that aligns closely with this principle. Achieving a no first use agreement among nuclear powers, particularly between the US and China, could significantly reduce nuclear escalation risks. Historical precedents, like the 1998 China US detargeting agreement, suggest that diplomatic efforts can lead to meaningful steps toward nuclear restraint. South China Morning Post, China's most advanced amphibious assault ship, the Type 075 Yushin class, was spotted near Japanese waters for the first time in a year, signaling Beijing's intent to challenge US-led strategic containment. The ship, along with a Type 052 D Luyang-class guided missile destroyer, was seen 120 kilometers northeast of the Miyako Islands in Okinawa. Analysts believe these deployments demonstrate China's capability to counter potential American military interventions from Guam and Hawaii. The Type 075, the largest class of landing helicopter dock amphibious assault ship in the Chinese arsenal, can carry 30 helicopters and play a crucial role in a potential military campaign against Taiwan. This latest sighting is part of China's broader strategy to extend its naval power and gain valuable sea time for its crews. The ship's presence in these waters underscores China's growing naval ambitions and its readiness to operate far from its home shores. New York Times, a rocket engine test at a planned spaceport on the remote Scottish island of Unst ended in flames, highlighting the risks inherent in space exploration. The German company rocket factory Augsburg experienced an anomaly during the test, leading to an explosion that engulfed the launch platform. Despite the dramatic failure, no injuries were reported and the incident is viewed as a part of the trial and error process in advancing space technology. The site, intended to launch small satellites, reflects Western Europe's push for independent space capabilities following the breakdown of relations with Russia. The UK Space Agency and Britain's Civil Aviation Authority emphasize that such setbacks are expected and necessary for future success. The spaceport, Saxavord, remains optimistic, with plans to continue developing the site and testing rockets, underscoring the importance of the space industry to the UK economy. New York Times, Carlos Magdalena, a horticulturist at the Royal Botanic Gardens, Kew, in London, is renowned for his daring efforts to rescue endangered plant species, earning him the nickname, the Plant Messiah. His adventures have taken him to crocodile-infested waters in Australia, cliff ledges in Mauritius, and piranha-packed rivers in Colombia. Despite the risks, Magdalena's work has saved several plant species from extinction, gaining him immense respect in the botanical world. His passion for plants began as a child in Spain, where he grew his first lily. His reputation soared after being featured in a documentary by David Attenborough, who repeated the Plant Messiah moniker. Magdalena's dedication to plant conservation has made him a celebrity in horticulture, and his work continues to inspire efforts to protect the world's rarest plants. New York Times a Mediterranean cruise aboard the superyacht Bayesian turned tragic for British tech mogul Mike Lynch and his guests when the 180-foot vessel sank off the coast of Sicily during a violent storm. Of the 22 passengers, 15 were rescued, one body was recovered, and six, including Lynch, remain missing. Lynch, once dubbed the UK's Bill Gates, founded the software firm Autonomy and sold it to Hewlett Packard for $11 billion in 2011. This sale led to a decade-long legal battle with Lynch facing fraud charges in the U.S. before being acquitted earlier this year. The search for the missing passengers continues as authorities comb the site of the wreckage. New York Times. The European Union has announced a proposal to impose an additional 9% tariff on Tesla vehicles imported from China, while other Chinese automakers could face tariffs as high as 36.3%. This move, aimed at protecting European manufacturers from unfair competition, follows an investigation into Chinese automakers that began in October. 
The new tariffs, which come on top of the existing 10%, are set to last for five years. Tesla's lower rate reflects its lesser reliance on Chinese government subsidies compared to other manufacturers. The decision highlights the EU's effort to balance trade with China while safeguarding its own industry, contrasting with the US's more severe 100% tariffs on Chinese electric vehicles. New York Times Maria Branyas Moreira, the world's oldest person, has passed away at the age of 117. Born in San Francisco in 1907, Ms. Moreira lived through significant historical events, including the Spanish Civil War and both world wars. Her family announced her peaceful passing in her sleep on August 19 in Olet, Spain. Known for her reflections on life, Ms. Moreira once remarked on her impending departure, expressing a serene acceptance of her mortality. Despite her remarkable longevity, she humbly stated that she had not done anything special to reach such an age. Her life story, marked by resilience and historical witness, leaves a lasting legacy. BBC, in a harrowing account presented to a court, jurors heard how migrants trapped in a refrigerated van on a ferry crossing the English Channel screamed and banged on the walls as they ran out of oxygen. Anas al-Mustafa, 43, stands accused of smuggling seven individuals into the UK using a specially adapted vehicle on February 16. The ferry crew, alerted by the desperate cries, used an axe to break through a fake partition to free the group. The prosecutor, Nick Corsellis KC, detailed the cramped and airless conditions within the hidden compartment, which forced the migrants to stand without sufficient space or water. The heat generated by their bodies exacerbated the perilous lack of oxygen, leading to two migrants losing consciousness. An Australian nurse, Sari Gell, provided critical medical assistance on board. Mustafa, who moved to the UK from Syria in 2011, denies the charges of assisting unlawful immigration as the trial continues. Deutsche Welle, Vietnam's new leader, Talam, has chosen China for his first international visit, marking a significant move in the country's bamboo diplomacy strategy. Meeting with Chinese President Xi Jinping, Foreign Minister Wang Yi, and Premier Li Chang, Talam emphasized the importance of Vietnam's relationship with Beijing, despite ongoing territorial disputes over the South China Sea. This visit, however, does not signify a pivot away from the West, as Vietnam has also been strengthening ties with the United States. Talam's rise to power has seen a purge of technocrats and Western-leaning officials within the Communist Party, raising concerns about increased state repression. Speculation about a potential shift in Vietnam's foreign policy towards China is considered overblown by experts like Zachary Abuza, who notes that the trip had been planned well in advance. Talam's itinerary also included a visit to Guangdong province, paying homage to Ho Chi Minh's historical ties to the region. Rumors suggest Talam may visit the United States next, potentially meeting with President Joe Biden. Associated Press The U.S. men's basketball team secured their third consecutive Olympic gold medal on August 21, 2016, with a resounding 96-66 victory over Serbia. Kevin Durant led the charge with 30 points, capping off an Olympics where the U.S. dominated the medal tables, amassing 46 golds and 121 total medals. This margin was the largest in a non-boycotted Olympics in nearly a century. Other notable sports achievements on this date include Babe Ruth hitting his 600th home run in 1931 and Michael Phelps winning his sixth gold medal at the Athens Olympics in 2004, even though he did not swim in the final of the men's 4 by 100 meter medley relay. The U.S. team's victory in this event set a world record with a time of 3 minutes and 30.68 seconds. Additionally, on August 21, 2010, Kyle Busch made NASCAR history by becoming the first driver to win three National Series races in one week, completing the sweep at Bristol Motor Speedway. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.